The Spirit of the Lord is here, overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us, you're the reason we came to encounter to 
come on and worship him. We need an overflow of his love. We want an encounter with him. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Hallelujah. Lord God, we worship you tonight. We worship you in spirit and we worship you in truth. With all that we go through, we need an overflow of your love. We need a fresh anointing, a fresh wind. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, oh God. We give your name glory in this place. You are worthy. You are worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. We lift you up, oh God. We magnify you. For you are God and you are God alone. There is none like you in all the earth. Lord, you are high and you're lifted up. Your train, it fills the temple. And we worship you tonight. We glorify you, God. We exalt you tonight. Hallelujah. It is you that we come to worship. Hallelujah. We come to receive of you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. With an everlasting love. We love you because you first loved us. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We bless him. We bless him. Come on, give him a praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. It is by him that we live. It's him that we, by him that we move and that we have our very being. Without him, we wouldn't even exist. Hallelujah. We were made to worship him. We were created to worship him. Hallelujah. And we love him tonight. We love him tonight. God, we invite you in tonight. Hallelujah. We invite you in to come and sup with us, oh God. Feed us bread of heaven. Feed us till we want no more. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. We bless your name, O oh God. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. His son Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord, David said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Oh, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we honor the Lord tonight. receive your word tonight with gladness. Lord, we need a word from you, God. Send strength and encouragement tonight. Send hope tonight, God, through your word. For it is a lamp unto my feet, it is a light unto my path. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And so, God, let you, your word have free course unto them. We bind the hands of the enemy, even right now, that will come to stop us and hinder us from receiving your word. Station your angels in this place to war in the spirit of God. That your word can come forth. And we give you praise and honor and we glorify you in advance for what you're going to speak into our lives on tonight. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 13, 24. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted
planted good seed in his field. But that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weed among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted the good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked. No, replied the, replied, no he replied. You will uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest, until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvester to sort out the weeds, tie them in bundles, and burn them, and put the wheat in the barn. I'm just going to speak a few more minutes on this. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Jesus was previously, a few verses up, he was teaching about these four soils that the farmer was so into it. He said some fell on good ground, stony ground, rocky ground, good ground. They fell on good ground. And then he flipped it a little bit. Then he gave a parable, and he began to talk about the wheat and the tear. And he gave a parable of how the enemy comes in and sows seeds of discord. And how he comes into the, the church, basically, and sows seeds of discord. And how he uh, sowed wheat, tears among the wheat. And he was saying how detrimental that the weeds was to the tear. They look just alike. Weeds and tares, they look just alike. You can't tell the difference until they begin to bud. By the time they begin to bud, the weeds have wrapped around the wheat and begin to choke out the roots of the wheat. And he was saying that this is how important it is to be mindful of what type of seed that you sow. And we can bring it on into the church today. You have some weeds in the church, and you have some tears in the church, and you have some you have some uh, weeds and tears in the church. And he was Jesus was given an example. And they said, well, we started out good. It seemed like we planted some good seed. And the farmer said, well, we did. But an enemy came in and he sold some other stuff. And he began to uh, tell them that they said, well, let's just go in and pull them up. And as we pull them up, he said, no, because if you pull up the weeds, you're going to mess with the the wheat. If you pull the tares up, you're going to mess with the wheat. You have to be careful how you handle people in the church. Because the enemy comes not but for the steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we as believers, Peter told us that to be sober and to be vigilant for our adversary, the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And we have to make sure that we are not our uh, tares. And, and that, that, that we begin, that, that tares begin into their poisonous for one thing. I found out that tares, they sow, they wrap around the, the roots and begin to poison the wheat. You got to be careful about who you hook up with. You got to be careful about who you allow to speak stuff into your spirit and tell you all kind of stuff. Because some folk, they act like they got good intentions. Uh, yeah, they sound like they got good intentions, but there's an underlying motive that sometimes if we are not careful, that we'll get caught up in. So the Jesus was giving this parable was saying you can't just pull stuff up. You just can't go doing things all willy-nilly. You got to be wise. You got to know when to move and when not to move. And he was given this parable. He said, it's like an unto the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he was saying that even in this glorious church where we shout and sing and worship and where we lift our hands to our holy God and we love and embrace and kiss one another, that there are some things that's in the ministry that are not for the ministry. There are some folk that are not with the ministry. There are some folk that may be in your boat. They're rowing the other way. You may have some folk in your boat drilling holes. I come to tell everybody shouting ain't happy. Everybody speaking in tongues ain't sanctified. Everybody loving on you don't love you. You gotta be careful who you get tied up with. There are some folk, they've got a hidden agenda. It's to poison your spirit. It's to turn you against 
your brother or sister is to make you act like they act. Because they come acting just like you. They know you love everybody. Man, child, I love everybody. I don't bother with nobody. But you know what? See, when you start talking like that, you're talking like a weed. See, that's what you get. You're poison now. Because now you're slipping stuff in. And folk are thinking you're coming with the right motive, but you're really not. That's why we have to be sober. He said, an enemy has done this. In other words, it's motivated and produced by the devil, but he has to use people. The devil has to use people. He used opportunity. He uses areas where he is qualified to operate in. See, the devil can't operate in love because that's not part of his DNA. But he can operate in confusion. He can operate in hate. He can operate in unforgiveness. And sometimes we have to be, we got all the time, we have to be careful and we have to really study folk and understand who they really are. Because some folk, they'll come loving on you and hugging on you. And before you know it, they start calling you. And then every time they see you, they got something to tell you. And what they're telling you is seem is semi sweet. Have you ever had some sweet semi sweet chocolate? It tastes sweet, but it really ain't that good to me. It's got a bitter taste to it, and it seems like it seems like they're all right, but they're really not. I like milk chocolate. I don't like dark chocolate. I like it sweet. If it's supposed to be sweet, I want it to be sweet. I don't want no bitter in my coffee. I don't want no bitter in my tea. I want my Kool Aid sweet. I want my cake sweet. I want my pie. Sweet, I don't want no diet, nothing. If I got to drink a diet soda, I'll drink water. I just don't want nothing watered down. If you got to see the thing, we got to be real. He said, An enemy, an enemy has done this while you were asleep, in other words, while you were daydreaming. While you have stopped praying, you allow somebody to sow some seeds in your spirit. When you were angry, you allow somebody to come in. You talked to the wrong person. You said the wrong thing. You got in the wrong car. You, you dialed the wrong phone number. While you were asleep. In other words, when you sleep, you're not aware. He said, enemy done this while men slept. The enemy came in and sowed seeds, sowed tares among the wheat, and they grew up together. And, if, and by the time they grow up, <laughs> the tares done wrapped all around the wheat. Sometimes we get so tangled up and tied up in stuff, it seems like we'll never get out. <laughs> That's why we can't always say the devil did it. The devil might have produced it, but you introduce yourself to it. That's why you're in it. He slips in unaware. Jesus told Peter, there go Peter again. That's why he could talk about it. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. See, on this journey, we're going to have some problems with the devil. And his purpose is to stunt our spiritual growth. Now, it's our responsibility to care for our own spiritual growth. That's why you can't let people tell you, don't go to church tonight. Be careful when they whisper them things. Well, you know, it looked like rain. I think I'm going to stay home. See, people are sowing seed. I'm tired. I'm tired too. Before you know it, you start talking like them. You start, and then you get on the phone and call somebody else. I'm not going tonight because it looked like rain. But God done blessed us with brand new cars. We can get in the car and ride and don't even summon the car. You can't even hit the rain on the outside. But the devil comes to steal to kill and he comes to destroy. He don't care about what methods that he used. His total objective is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to break our fellowship with God. He wants to break our fellowship with one another. He don't want us to walk, operate in harmony and unity. He wants to come and he do it by sowing seeds of discord. That's his purpose. Because see, the weeds represent people 
that the devil is using. Because, see, weeds are not valued where they grow. You want to know somebody that's just grown, so they're not valued where they're supposed to be growing. So they say, I'm going to choke out the desirable stuff. I'm going to wrap around somebody that I can discourage, that I can weaken, that I can cause to be just like me. And the reason people are not valued because their motives are not right. When you feel like you're not valued, you are in it for the wrong reason. There are some hidden agendas. There are some ambitious issues going on. They don't, they don't appreciate what I do in the church. Who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for God? Or are you doing it to be seen? Because if you're doing it to be seen, you're going to get your applause and that's it. Because we're not going to lay out a red carpet for you. We're not going to throw hang flowers from the top. We're not going to do all of that because we all in here on a voluntary basis and because we love God. But people that feel unvalued... They become poisoned by their ambition. See, because the enemy, he hates us. He used every trick, every tactic. He used every snare, every trap to get us. And if we are not vigilant and we're not sober, we will fall to the attacks of the enemy. He said, an enemy has done this because his purpose is to steal our hope. He wants to rob us of our joy. He wants to make us doubt God that he loves us and that he's for us and that this thing is real. His purpose is to come steal and sow lies in our spirit. He sows doubt so we won't believe God because he wants to steal our spiritual inheritance. That's his purpose. So how can he do that? By sowing seeds in our mind. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. Yeah, that's why you have to be mindful what you let in. We got to be mindful. Sometimes you got to stop some conversations. No, no, I ain't trying to hear that. I just came from some stuff to fighting the enemy. I'm not going back in right now. I know I got to go back in, but I ain't going back in two times. Because my, my mind needs a time to, to, to bounce back. Because there's a battle always going on. Paul said, there's a war in my members. I got my own battles. I can't deal with yours too. Fight your battles. It's one thing when we come in for help. But it's another thing when we come in not to get help and to keep things torn up. Because, see, the enemy uses these tactics to choke out the peace of God in our life. See, if we don't have no peace, then we all mess up. Because there are some things money cannot buy. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what's in front of your name, behind your name. There are some things that only God can give. God said, peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, but as I. He said, the world, when you came, you came with a sense of peace. But he said, I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. And the devil said, everything he gave you and everything he promised you, I promise you I'm going to try to steal it from you. I'm going to try to rob you. I'm going to try to kill you. I'm going to try to destroy you. And I'm going to do it by sowing seeds in your life. The Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Their faith, because they're saved by faith through grace. Everything God has afforded us and given us, the devil wants to rob us of it. He said, I'm going to choke it out of them. He said, if I choke it out of them, they'll never get it back. That's his purpose. If I can choke the faith out of them and make them complain and doubt and murmur, because he knows that does not move God. Comes to heal with words. He comes to destroy with words. Jesus was in the wilderness for forty days. Forty nights had not eaten anything. He came with him with all of this stuff, but Jesus said, "It is written." 
the same words he used, you have to flip it on him. So because you can't beat the devil with a stick. No, you ain't going to be able to praise him away. You ain't going to be able to worship him away. Because as soon as you come down out of that worship, he's going to be waiting on you. There's some stuff, see, there's some stuff only the Word going to be able to do. There's some things that the Word got to take care of. That's why Jesus told his disciples, you are clean through the Word which I have spoken. The Word comes as a, wa it comes like washing powder. It comes and scrub you clean. There's some things only the Word can do. Because when the enemy comes with lies, you got to have some Word in you. Get thee behind me, Satan may not work all the time. Amen. That comes after you done put the word on him. Amen. Hallelujah ain't going to work all the time. Amen. You got to know the word of God. We have to know the word. See, he comes with words. And he sold them into our spirit. And he used people. He wants to become powerless. Because the Bible said we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That's how we overcome. Because if he can have his way. But you know, it also says death and life in the power of the tongue. Sometimes we give in too easy. Sometimes we accept defeat too easy. We cry and say, I'm tired of going through. You think the devil care about our tears? We could be rolling on the floor begging for him to stop. He's going to put his foot on your neck. Jesus gave Peter authority when he recognized who he was. See, when you have authority, you can speak to the devil. You, you can be careful about what comes in your spirit. I think we just don't like to hurt people's feelings. We shouldn't be hurting people's feelings. But now when you come with all that stuff now, if you don't want to pray about it, if you want to complain all the time, I can't deal with that. See, the devil, he comes to choke the life out of us. He wants to blame God for our troubles, all of our trials, everything that we go through. He don't want us to love one another. He don't want us to be unified. He understands what unity does. He knows the purpose of harmony and peace and joy. He knows that He knows that when we are unified and we are walking in harmony and love and forgiveness and understanding and bearing one another's burden, when he knows we are doing that, then he has no room to operate. It's when we let all that negative stuff come in, he can work through that. That's in his jurisdiction. That's when he can operate. But he wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy our families, our children, our church. He don't want nothing to be unified in our lives. Because he want, the Bible says he goes to God every day accusing us. He's an accuser of the brethren. He go every day, God look at him. Oh, all that shouting. You know, they still don't like so-and-so. He preached a good message, but you know what, God, he did this. And a lot of times he ain't lying. Well, uh, when he go to God, he ain't lying. Because the Bible says a liar will not tarry in his sight. A lot of that stuff the devil is going to God with is true about us. But you know one thing about it, though. Even though he go to God with it, because we are covered under the blood... And we are part of God's family. See, that's where that redemption comes in. But back to the first point. Let's not get past that like it's okay. There's some stuff we need to get right. Because sometimes we are unforgiving. Sometimes we are, are, are causing confusion. Sometimes we are sowing seeds of discord. Sometimes we are living not godly. There's some, the devil ain't lying, but thank God for the blood. Let's not skip that part. Sometimes we skip stuff. But thank God for the blood. Thank you for the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. That because we know that we are sinners saved by grace, that because we are in the family of God, he said, if you fall, you have an advocate. That will plead your case. But first, you got to go and confess that you sin. See, ain't like we can just be sinning. And we, I got an advocate, so I'm good. No, no, no. 
That ain't how that work. See, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, he wants to destroy us spiritually, mentally, emotionally. That's what he wants to do. And he do it by sowing seeds of discord. Tear, sowing wheat, and te- sowing tears in the wheat, in the good stuff. He want to taint the good stuff. He want to taint that part that's in us that's loving. He said, if I can just get in. If I, just, give me a little, just give me a little wiggle room to get in. Even though they might be sweet, I'm going to try to deal with some stuff they ain't overcome yet. I'm going to try to get in and work in that mind and some stuff that done happened they ain't got over yet. If I can just get in and sow some seeds in their mind about something or somebody and just keep them hostage to that thing. An enemy has done it. See, let's talk about weeds that I'm getting ready to bring on in about here. Weeds are a problem in the church. Talking about in the church. Weeds are a problem in the church because they change the natural diversity of the church. In other words, we are not all the same anymore when weeds are allowed to continue to grow in the church. They change the diversity of the church. That means that we are no longer as loving as we should be and that we are supposed to be. It changes the diversity and it changes the balance of the church. That's what weeds do. Because they threaten the survival of those that are trying to live right. Weeds compete for space. (laughs) They compete for space. And they're going to do whatever possible to get that space. If they got to choke it at you. If they got to lie on you. Slander you. Notice them before you notice the grass. All these weeds in my yard. Because they're seeking for the light. The spotlight. Not, not the light, but the spotlight. They are, weeds are aggressive. Because they come to steal, kill, and to destroy. They come to completely take over. Weeds are in competition with the grass. In other words, the weeds in the church are in competition with folk that just want to serve God and do live their purpose out. And how do weeds spring up? They spring up by gossip. They spring up and they contaminate the environment. They spring up through worrying and fear and anger, resentment, jealousy. Anxiety, depression, and lies and slander. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves with these weeds growing in our spirit. If we're not careful, we're caught sleeping on the job. There's going to be some things that's going to spring up. And sleeping in the term of not being aware of our environment and our surroundings and who we allow in to speak into our spirit. There's some things on TV we can't even watch. There's some ministries that come on we shouldn't be watching because they are not preaching the gospel that we know. And sometimes we grab hold of that stuff because it sounds, well, they on TV, they got to be right. A lot of stuff on TV ain't right. So a lot of ministries ain't right. And I don't fight nobody's ministry, but I'm just telling the facts. That's the facts. Everybody that's saying they're serving God ain't really serving God. They ain't got other motives. That's why it's good to be grounded and rooted where you were planted. All hopping all over the place. I'm going over there. They got something going over here. Then you get over there. I'm going over here. They got this going on over there. Oh, I love it over here. Now I picked up so much stuff. And then come back and you can't receive the truth. If we want to prevent 
spiritual weeds from growing in our spirit. I'm going to give you these three, four little things and we're gone. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8, now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then he said, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the peace of God will be with you. The first thing we have to do to avoid allowing weeds to grow in our spirit is to get our mind right. And once we get our mind right, we can deal with some of the stuff that come up against us. We can deal with one another. See, if I can get my mind right, I can treat you right. If I'm not letting anything come in, stuff I hear, stuff I think, stuff I know that's true. But if I get my mind right and begin to think on things that are right and pure and true, then I can operate where God wants me to operate. I can love right and see, and weeds won't grow in my spirit. Then if we want to, after we get our mind right, Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. In Ephesians 4 and 31, he said, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. That's the stuff that we produce. He said, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. The way to keep weeds out of our spirit, these are the things that we have to do. When we can do that, we can treat one another right. Because there is no excuse for us not treating one another right. There is nothing we can say and be justified why we don't treat one another right. There is nothing. I don't care what they did. How, if you got the Holy Ghost, I understand things bother you and get you, and it gets you throw you off a little bit. But after that thing, you done, you done thought about it. You got to say, now wait a minute. Now I got the love in spite of. I, I, I got to go through because I named the name of Christ. And sometimes it's in the church the way I go through. Because everybody is not where we are. Because we may be up to date and before the sun go down, it could be us. That's why in this last part I'm getting to is Colossians 3 and 12 to prevent weeds from growing. He says, since God has chosen you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I love this one. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For well, as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. That what, that's what keeps the weeds from growing in our spirit. That prevents that. So it's all about a mind change. Not only is it all about a mind change, but it's about our actions. And what we allow so that the enemy can't come in and sow seeds in our spirit that are not right. has done it. But he used somebody. Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. He might have started it, but he used somebody. And it's not an excuse for us to say, if they hadn't did this, I wouldn't have did that. And not claiming we got the Holy Ghost because he's a keeper. The Holy Ghost is a counselor. He leads us into all truths. We override it a lot. 
Well, we're going to go and do what we're going to do. The Holy Ghost telling us, don't do it, don't do it, don't say it, don't say it. We keep right on, he hush on up. Go ahead on. He'll be back. But we have to be mindful that we don't allow the enemy to sow seeds, to come in and, di and disrupt what was good. He said we sow good seeds. But the enemy don't like that. He don't like the goodness in us. He don't like that we're trying to live right. And we're trying to love one another. That's why we have to be careful. One of the main fruits of the Spirit is love. But the next one I like is self-control. Because if we can control ourselves, we can all that other fruits to come in line. If we can practice self-control, we can love and practice self-control. We can deal with the hum. We'll be humble. We'll be gentle. We'll be kind. We'll be patient. We'll be long-suffering. Yeah, we can deal with all of that. The problem is with love will fuel all of that. But if we can't control ourselves, we'll be like a city without walls. Anything going in and anything coming out. And the sad part is when you hear somebody say, whatever come out, come up. From a Christian, that is not, that's, that shouldn't be. Because there's some stuff that can come up. Now Paul says some of this stuff shouldn't even be mentioned of us. So tonight, if you want to come for prayer, you know that there's some seeds that may be in you that are not right. Uh, you want to prevent them, and you just say, Lord, I want to get my mind right. Because every now and then I get off track. We all do at some point. But I want to prevent some things. I want to I want to meditate on these scriptures. I want to get these scriptures in my heart that when they come, I'll know how to handle them. Because we deal with people on a regular basis. And sometimes we're not really just there that day. Sometimes we, have, we don't always have a good day. But if I can stop before I speak, if I can stop before I act, I may not make it all the time, but if I can get at least a 90% rate, then I'm on my way. I don't want the enemy sowing seeds in my mind. Once he get in, it's hard to get him out because we begin to justify stuff. But God is a deliverer. He will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. The mind is the battleground for the enemy. That's what he wants against. It's not our things that he wants. He's not concerned with our things. He's concerned about the spiritual growth. He don't want us to spiritually grow. He wants to be stagnated. He wants to choke the very spiritual life out of us. He don't want us to make it. He don't want us to survive. That's why he's so aggressive in his attacks. And he can catch us while we're sleeping. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father in heaven, we thank you tonight. Lord God, we thank you for your glory. Thank you for your word tonight, God. Reminding us, oh God, to be careful of the enemy's attacks. That we are not caught unaware. We're not caught sober. We're not caught being vigilant. But God, we are aware of our spiritual surroundings. That Lord, we continue to keep our spiritual life in check. That, God, we would do those very things, God, that please you. That we won't get caught up in bad communications. Conversations we should not entertain. But, God, we will be peacemakers. Lovers of everybody. God, that we will walk up right before you, God. That we will be the ambassadors that you called us to be, God. We know the enemy seeks to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But, Lord, you sent your son, Jesus, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. You told us to seek those things that are above and not things of this earth. Help us, God, to clothe ourselves with loving kindness and tender mercy. God, help us, oh God. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Help us to treat people right. Help us to be kind. Help us to be humble. Help us, Lord, to walk in your way and in your will. 
God, if there's anything in us, God, that we know that is not right, if there's some seeds and some weeds that have grown in our spirit, God, we ask you to spiritually remove them, God. Touch our minds, God. If we've looked over it, God, bring it to our remembrance that we can repent and come clean before you that you can wash us and cleanse us, oh God. You said, God, if we confess our sins, that you were faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, touch our minds, God. That, Lord, we will saturate our minds with your word. David said, I have hid thy word in my heart that I might not sin against you. God, help us tonight. Help us to love one another. Help us to be unified. God, we pray now for a spirit of unity, God, to hit our church. That we will walk together in love and unity. That we will please you in all that we do. That, Lord, we will put everything in the practice that we've learned of you, oh God. We will love as you love. Now, God, we ask you to anoint us, God, right now. Anoint us with that mind. Anoint us with that mind, God. In the name of Jesus. Touch us in a mighty way, God. That as we leave this altar tonight, that we'll have a new mind, that we will have the mind of Christ. Help us to transform this mind, oh God. We tell you, thank you. We give you glory in this place, God. Your, your word have come to cleanse us and purify us and make us whole. And we thank you. Thank you for our overseer. God, continue to bless him, God. Strengthen him, God. Touch that body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Every sickness, every infirmity, any disease that will try to come up against his body, we now plead your blood against it and we decree healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now. Bless him going out and bless him coming in. Renew his mind day by day, oh God. Well, Lord, we thank you for Mother Benjamin standing by his side. God, strengthen and keep her, God. Lord, God, encourage her heart, God. In the name of Jesus, keep her healthy. No sickness or disease, no infirmity shall attack her body. But we decree complete healing over our body. Keep her strong and healthy. In the name of Jesus, touch her mind, God. In the name of Jesus, bless their family. Everything that pertains to them, God, bless it. Bless this ministry, every member of this body. Bless our families. Bless our home. Keep us healthy, sober, and sound mind. In the name of Jesus, everything pertains to us, God. Bless us, God. Help us to walk in your will and walk in your wisdom. Increase this ministry. Let this ministry be a light to this world. God, we tell you, thank you for everything that you're doing. Look on those that are sick in our family. Touch and heal their bodies, God. Bring healing now, God. Give us a report, God, that you did it. We hold them up to you right now. Those that have strayed away, God, have walked away from the ministry, that are struggling trying to get back in. God, open a door that they can come on back, God. Touch their minds, oh God. Deliver them and set them free. Send them home as you sent the prodigal son home. God, we thank you. God, we give you glory in this house tonight. We bind every sickness tonight, every disease. In the name of Jesus, we bind depression. We bind fear. We bind anxiety. We're tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare freedom in the spirit. And we give you glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We bless the Lord.